Hey everyone, Tankenstein here, and welcome to the next episode of Stock Dispated. In this video, I'll be going over the Yak-15 and going over whether or not it's worth it going from stock all the way to spaded, if it's worth crewing, if it's worth spading, and really kind of how I think that this vehicle plays. Now, in the first match, I will be doing a fully stock match. Somewhere in between will be the second match, so probably about half of the performance parts, and the final match will be my final recommendation after I fully spaded this vehicle with all the parts unlocked, and uh, will be able to give you guys a, a recommendation on whether or not I think that this vehicle is worth again crewing and also playing regularly and it's especially important being that this is actually the second vehicle in the trio of vehicles underneath the Yak 15P. So it's a very very interesting thing. This is not a mandatory vehicle if you want to continue with that tech tree. So it is definitely worth watching this video to see if it's actually worth going through or not. And also I just actually looked up Stock Dispated and it looks like the European Canadian did exactly this. He actually has a, a series called Stock Dispated so I'm not trying to jump on your jam man. Uh, you know, I'm not, I didn't even know that you had done these videos, but, uh, you know, I hope you guys enjoy my stock dispated, but apparently this was not a new idea. So if you thought it was, my apologies, it was just a new idea to me, but it has already been done before. That said, let's get into it. So one thing that I noticed immediately is how slow this vehicle is. Um, I mean, it is obviously going to be very slow. I believe it's got the same engine, I mean, more or less about the same engine as what you might see in the HE-162 Salamander. So very, very similar, not quite the same, but um, it is pretty much the same. It's just more or less a reverse engineered copy. Now going around 1500 meters, I started off, I believe at zero-ish, give or take. Um, I'm only going 500-ish kilometers per hour. Not very fast at all, and uh, that's to be expected. Now this is totally stock, but one thing I am noticing is just it's superb handling of course i mean yaks are pretty well known for that um possibly more than even mig 15s and um i would say that's probably true here but it does sacrifice a lot of other performance aspects again like speed uh for example the mig 9 is a much faster vehicle at least it feels like than this especially the mig 9 late but again overall this has pretty decent roll rate good turning rate, um, not good climb rate stock, very powerful cannons, but you really should be close to your enemy and make sure that you can hit them. Ooh, should I go for? I'm going for this AM1, at least for right now. Can I get a hit? Okay, I got a few hits. I'll take it. I'll take a crit because this guy, is pro he can probably land a few hits on me unless he chooses not to. What is going on? And this is what I mean. I really cannot be wasting shots here. I only have 16 left. And they are gone. Bad gunnery on my part. But I can go ahead, go back to base. Now, that P-51 can easily track me down. How many of you guys are left? I've got two kills. So not too bad. But that was easily... I mean, that was more or less... Uh, it should have been a kill in a better pilot or with a better pilot or better uh, more accurate pilot that would have been a third kill so if you want to count it like that i had him right in my sights and uh, if you feel like you could have gotten that kill then yes you could have gotten that kill now i'm trying to go back to base it looks like i've lost my way a little bit here i got this g56 behind me again this thing can pull g's like mad turn down turn down no air brakes by the way another kill right there if I had ammunition, that would have been a fairly easy kill, in my estimation. But, of course, you're not going to get it. Now, a lot of props at this BR, or around this BR, can easily catch up to you. And so, I'm going to see if I can make him waste his ammunition a little bit more. Um, hopefully. But, unless you... Ooh, whoa. Unless you have expert crew, you're going to probably black out. Which is kind of what I'm doing here. G56... Now, he's just really catching up to me, but he can't turn in on me. I mean, it's just kind of uh, fantastic, but I allowed that to happen. Okay, let's turn in on him. Eh, it's not going to matter. Anywho, I still got two kills. Not too bad for my first match. 
Again, that was stock. I'm going to use the next match kind of halfway there with my performance parts. And then the third match will be fully spaded. But for my first match ever in a Yak-15, ever. Not even the Yak-15 I've ever flown in a match. Not too shabby. And I had at least two opportunities, if I was a little bit more accurate with my cannons, to have gotten two more kills. So, again, two kills. But, again, opportunities to have up to four in that match. Uh, with a more accurate gunner. So that's it. Let's get into the next match. So some things I'm immediately noticing, and this is, as you guys could imagine, the mid-upgrade uh, match. So I've got about half of the performance parts, probably around 60% of the way there at this point. I've got research through the wings. And one thing I notice, obviously, is I am going actually a fair amount quicker. So... I've flown this a little bit, give or take, with about this much performance, and I'll tell you, um, it's not very, it's not much faster, but it's faster to the point where it's nice, and oh, how lucky was that, but one big problem with this is that now it's just fast enough and you don't have any uh, air brakes or anything like that, where if you go into a dive, you break that 750 kilometer per hour mark, you're screwed. Um, oh, well, what is this guy doing? Okay. So, yeah, I mean, you're screwed at that point. It's not very good. And, uh, ooh, you know what? I'm kind of close to him. Don't really want to fire too much at him because this thing doesn't really have the best cannons in the world. And if I miss, then that's a lot. But I've broken this plane now um, in a dive I've had wing rip pretty bad because of course in a dive it's just not good this is oh after all if I'm not mistaken an adaptation of the Yak 9 and so while it does definitely feel faster it's got slightly better maneuverability you can feel all those improvements it's very nice um, really one of the biggest problems with it in my opinion is just that it's I don't know it's still not all that fast. I mean, it's a you know, 6.7 VR aircraft. I can't really complain all too much, but if I go too far out of my way with this thing and I dive, I mean, you'll see it'll say reduce speed in just a second here. You know what? I'm not even going to try it. <laughs> not even going to try it. I've gotten down to 750 kilometers per hour, and it has screwed me over. So I'm going to go back here to the to actual combat. I thought I was chasing down the Arado 234, but I guess not. My only issue is that at this point I have 26 cannon rounds and the biggest problem in my opinion with this aircraft regardless of anything else is the fact that you only get 120 cannon rounds with it which is not good. Um, in fact actually it's quite bad. Okay, going for this HO229. He should be a pretty juicy target hopefully. Ooh, sweet, sweet mamma lamma jamma gonna land this thing now because at this point I have no ammunition even if I get an assist I'd be pretty happy I should have gotten an assist with that ME262 but the HO229 I am very much happy with two kills pretty stress-free with those two kills in that first match I had two kills and two would have been kills if I had just a little bit more ammo but um, you know ultimately like I said I mean as you could expect with almost any other plane in War Thunder as you get more performance, you get better, especially when it comes to gunfighters that don't have access to missiles or anything like that. And this is definitely no exception to that general guideline, that general principle. But it gets to a point where you start to actually threaten the integrity of your aircraft, your, your structural uh, stability, because my wings are starting to shake, getting close to 770, and it's going to tell me to reduce speed in just a second. So, yes, you really have to watch out, and once I get that engine and that cover, I would imagine that I'll be pushing it to the point where, right there, it didn't show me, but if I had the engine and the cover, it would have said reduce speed. You know, I mean, this is not a very good airframe, and because of that, the top speed isn't good, and, uh, you know, it's really got mediocre performance, but again, if you can really leverage your maneuverability, which is amazing in this aircraft, you should be able to do quite well despite your lack of speed. Rule number one, don't put your aerial, uh, whatchamacallit's on, your smoke on, while there's still anyone left on the enemy team or, you know, if you're anywhere outside of your base because 
That's the reason why I spotted this guy from like 20 kilometers away. So I got this ME262A1U1, it looks like down here, just based on what the kill feed shows. I mean, of course, the kill feed alerted me to somebody's destroying our medium tanks. Our medium tanks were over here. I looked and I confirmed. So yes, don't do that, guys. It is a bad idea. So another thing that's a bad idea is giving up your energy before you really need it. So I'm going to drop my throttle down a little bit. The problem with a lot of these early engines is that these early jet engines rather is that they're very uh they don't have great throttle response might be a good way to put it got the kill Woo, nelly oh baby <laughs> three kills not too bad again do not do what that guy did if you're watching this uh rizzo gomiat 134 sorry but uh that is not a good strategy buddy so this is fully spaded and I mean I've noticed a few very key things about this vehicle the playstyle how it is fully spaded all those things and first and foremost I mean this thing sacrifices a ton in the way of speed when it comes to maneuverability I mean it gives up a lot of its speed but this thing handles like a UFO oh my gosh it's ridiculous especially with fully spaded I mean with all those upgrades wings airframe engine everything it's just ridiculous also i can now get up to ooh, that was ugly i can now get substantially faster got a crit perfect as i always say getting an assist is just about as good as getting a kill of course you want the kill but i'm not going to complain especially with such limited ammunition and at that range now that said this vehicle is just phenomenal when it comes to maneuverability i mean it's almost second to none in fact actually i would not be too surprised if i could outmaneuver that h0229 um, but what i was saying is that it's i can probably hit around 50 ish kilometers per hour more uh getting up to around eh, 1500 to 2000 meters of altitude but that's not necessarily saying all too much unfortunately uh, the big problem is is that it's top speed that I can hit before it sees wing breakage It's still roughly the same So you really have to throttle down on this thing because it doesn't have air brakes It doesn't have a lot of those creature comforts that you might expect from uh, better aircraft Ooh, nice crit So now I can put my throttle up, but as I'm I think I mentioned in an earlier uh, match is that one of the problems with it is that being that you have to throttle down so much especially in a steep dive uh one of the the ooh, come on just give me the kill just give me the kill okay wow this is ugly welcome to tankenstein's guide on just shooting planes out of the sky anywho what i was saying what i was saying is that unfortunately um, you know, you'll see a lot of wing breakage with this aircraft and the fact is also Especially if you're a guy like me, there's not really a ton of ammunition, which kind of sucks And so between having to throttle down having a lot of wing breakage having a lot of these issues Just kind of being ever-present with it It creates some some, you know, pretty big issues eh, When it comes to overall speed So as I take off here, just want to get some more concise points out before my brain kind of melts like it just did now again this thing is very much limited by its speed if it had a 50 mile per or kilometer per hour higher top speed i feel like it would be substantially better you know barring making or uh, losing some of its other things like maneuverability which again phenomenal in this aircraft now it's got a similar ish rate of climb compared to the me 262 i believe uh, it's got worse cannons it's got fewer rounds of ammunition but it is much more maneuverable and if you can put your shots on target this plane is almost unmatched at 6.7 br now a lot of people might ask you know is this plane should should i get the yak 17 as well and really there's only two big differences between this and the yak 17 maybe three kind of and one of them is indirect so first the engine the uh the instrument cluster here is actually different on the Yak-17. It's a more modernized variant. And second, it has a nose landing gear. So it actually, it's got a tricycle landing gear, essentially. That's it. That's it. 
Um, so there's not really all too much else. I believe it weighs a little bit more due to the uh, the landing gear arrangement. So it's just marginally less maneuverable. It has marginally worse performance. But again, I mean, overall, if it's probably a little bit better because it makes landing a little bit easier. But in my opinion, it's not really all that big of a deal. Now, alternatively or additionally, I mean, this thing can actually take out a lot of ground units and... Uh, when I, was, when I was grinding for this to get this spaded, that was one of the main ways I would do it. And, I mean, it was just phenomenal. Like, you could take out medium tanks, uh, shooting them from the sides. So I'm going to climb up here. He shouldn't be able to catch me. And I'll be able to get him in the downswing. Maybe, maybe, maybe. Perfect. This is how we do it. Put them... Uh, oh, and that's another big weakness, actually, come to think of it. Terrible flaps. Absolutely terrible. Perfect! This thing has just unbeatable maneuverability. I mean, it's just phenomenal. I should just let him die. Yeah, I'm just gonna let him die. Stop wasting my ammunition on him. So I got this A21 behind me. I'm really surprised he's not going for me. And the great thing about this is that, I mean, with an expert crew, you're not going to get blacked out, but it's actually pretty easy not to black out with this aircraft, um, surprisingly so. You would think that, especially with the incredible maneuverability of it, it'd be pretty easy to uh, black out all the time, but that's simply not the case. So I'm going to go for this AR-234. Not sure what this A-21R is doing. Um, he's just kind of avoiding combat with me. But he's probably going to go for me once this AR-234 comes around okay turn down my throttle about halfway again one of the biggest weaknesses of this aircraft and really all early jets is that it has very little capability um, insofar as throttle response is concerned it's just terrible with that and if I'm not mistaken correct me at the comments if I'm wrong I have to go brush up on my history a little bit but this uses basically a ooh that's ugly Bunch of ugliness here. But this uses a, uh, a Russian reverse-engineered version, the RD-10, of the BMW 003 engine, I believe. So it's got the same engine, again, if I'm not mistaken, correct me if I'm wrong, as what you might see on the HE-162. Uh, so it's not, not too bad. Oh, and by the way, I do have this equipped with um, anti-aircraft shells. Which, very, very nice. I only have two shots left, so I'm going to go back to land. I'll see if I can land a few shots in the back of this tank. I doubt it. But right now, i got three kills, one assist, and a few ground kills. So, who knows? And... Ah, I hit him, but it doesn't really do anything. So, time to go land. See if we can finish up this match. But again, do I recommend this aircraft before I finish up this match? Because there's a chance I get shot down or something happens where I don't make it back. Do I recommend this aircraft? Yes. I love it. I mean, the Yak-15P has everything that this has, except it only has one cannon. This has the two cannons, which revolutionizes it in many ways. It makes it so that, rather than being a dog with just a little bit of bite, this thing actually can take down aircraft very well, and if you are good at shooting, if you are good at aiming, rather, this will be your best friend. I mean, it's just a phenomenal plane. Like, Soviet Russian jets are just such good gunfighters that it's just it's incredible and despite the absolute lack of speed with this and you can go kind of quick once you get going especially around this BR I mean 600 plus kilometers per hour at 6.7 BR is not terrible but again you are limited by the fact that this is built on a Yak-9 airframe and because of that uh, it does have a very limited overall top speed before the entire thing just starts falling apart. So, there's a lot of pluses, there's a lot of minuses with it. In my opinion, the pluses far outweigh the minuses. I don't think that this could be at 7.0 BR, for example, just because it's too slow. But at 6.7 BR, this aircraft is phenomenal. And yes, from stock to spaded, this is actually a very easy aircraft to grind. Now, one thing I did notice is that it does take a little bit... Ooh, this might be ugly. It takes a little bit more RP to actually grind this thing um, than you might see with a lot of other aircraft. So, um, 
you know, each mod takes a little bit more than I was kind of hoping for, but overall, it's still not all too bad. And for a gunfighter like me, somebody who likes to use cannons and guns in this game, despite, again, my lack of amazing aiming, it's still phenomenal. So I've got this last guy left. I'm definitely going to have an energy advantage over him, especially being that that's the A21R. The funny thing is, is that the Yak-15 and the A21R are the only two aircraft to basically take um, aircraft that were uh, originally prop planes and successfully adapt them to jets. So it's funny that the battle comes down to us two being the only two planes in, if I'm not mistaken, again, world history, where they were successfully adapted to jet usage uh, and produced that way. So really, really cool. But I am not not really maneuvering as well. This is uh, when that expert modification, the expert um, crew stat would really come in handy. And I can't put these flaps on because they'll break, I'm sure. I don't know what he's doing, man. I don't know what he's doing. Okay. Isn't that a funny way to end it? In the uh, two aircraft that are like that, plus each match I got more kills or assists. And so we end on four kills, one assist, 3,300 points, and two ground targets killed. That said, let me know what you guys think about this video in the comments below. Like I said, 100% recommend the Yak-15. Don't know if I can recommend the Yak-17. Honestly, I have not grinded it yet. But based on the stats and based on what I know about the aircraft as a whole, just being that it is slightly more modern in that it has a nose landing gear, plus it also has slightly better uh, avionics, I guess you could say, or a more modern instrument panel. Maybe it's going to be better for sim players, but beyond that, the Yak-15, Yak-17, about the same, and I 100% recommend the Yak-15. Holy crap, cow, this is just a phenomenal aircraft. I was not expecting to love it this much, especially with such little ammo and eh cannons, but my god, you put those shells on target, this thing will outturn anyone oh my gosh 100 love it but that said let me know what you guys think in the comments below again tell me if you guys have any ideas on this series i am always interested to hear because i want to improve as much as i can but thanks again i'll see you all on the other side take care everyone